Okay. In this video, we're going to talk about the dplyr verbs select, mutate, filter, and arrange. If you haven't already loaded the data, you might want to go back to the previous video where I discussed how to load the mammal life histories data and make sure that it's ready for us to use. Or you can type the code, pause the video here and type this code in. We're in the uh, project tire data, and let's just double check that we're where we want to be. So there's our R proj file. I saved this little script as lecture.r, and then there's a data subfolder that's got the data. All right. So the first verb that we're interested in, and the one that we're going to use uh, quite a lot, is the select verb. And select does pretty much what it says, which is the beauty of these dplyr data verbs. It's going to select columns out of our uh, data frame. So the first argument is always going to be the name of our data frame object. And then we just name the columns that we want. So in this case, maybe we want to see uh, what all the families are. So we just say family. If I run that, it's going to give me a data frame that just has one column, the family that has the families in all of the objects. And maybe I want family and the mass of the species that goes along with it. Actually, that's not going to make a lot of sense. So let's do this: blue genus and species. Oops, species. Now we get a data frame that just has four columns. Um, we've got family genus, species, and mass. In grams. Um, the order that you specify these things in affects the order that they come here. So if we wanted to put mass first for some reason, and so we're creating a table, I could just highlight this, cut and paste here. And now when I run it, it's going to give me the mass first, then family genus species. So that's select. Now what we're going to do is um, change a variable or create a new variable in our data set. And we do that using the verb mutate, which so we're going to mutate the data. So we mutate, and again, the first argument is our data frame. And uh, now we're going to just use the uh, R language specification for the, doing the mathematical calculations. So previously, um, you used a log base 10 uh, scale to make plots of this data. So in here, what, we're gonna, what we can do is we could say, I want to take, I want to transform it explicitly. So I'm going to say, call this variable log 10 mass. And then we just say equals, because it's, a, it's effectively a named argument inside a function. And then we're going to use the log 10 function from base r. And our goal is to do it with mass g. So if I run it, I get a tibble got the same number of observations, but you'll notice it now has 15 columns instead of 14. Oops. So um, that allows us to add a variable. So we see where's our variable. There it is. It's been added to the end of the data set. But if you notice, so if I go back into the view of the MLH object, um, I don't have my new variable there. So what's happened is we asked R to take MLH and calculate a new variable log 10 mass, and it did that. But all it did was return that object and print it out. And so as a result, we don't actually, we haven't actually saved this thing inside our, um, our data object. We've lost it effectively. 
We did the calculation, but we didn't keep it. So what, in order to keep the results of these um, uh, transformations of the data, what we have to do is uh, assign the result of this function to an object. And it can be a new object name. So we might call this MLH2. Um, and if I run that, you'll see we now get MLH2 has 15 variables. And if I look at it, it's got all the variables we had before. But now it also has the log 10 transformed body pass. Okay, we could do this and watch what happens up here when I do this. Okay, now I've got my 15 variables in there. So what's happened is the modified data frame has overwritten the previous object. And sometimes that's okay. Like in this case, we're adding a variable to the data frame. So all the other variables are still there. But for example, if we wanted to do this select, we wouldn't really want to overwrite MLH because we'd lose all of that other data. Now, we could easily recreate it. This is the beauty of writing a script by loading the data again. Um, but you sometimes, if you're sort of destroying the existing data, you want to save it to a new name. If you're adding it, you could still save it to a new name. That's always safe. But you might also overwrite it if you overwrite the object with the new expanded version. All right. The next thing we want to do is be able to arrange these data frames according to some of their variables and or sort, if you like. In this case, the dplyr function is called arrange. And again, we do MLH. And let's say we want to arrange it by body mass. So we say mass dot g dot. And what we get is uh, it's going to print out. So we've still got our 15 columns of 1400 variables by 1400 plus rows. But now if we look at, we're looking at sort of the top 10 rows here, you see that our small um, mammals have been, have floated to the top. And um, so that's, ordered everything by uh, how big they are. What if we wanted to see the biggest ones? Well, then we're going to modify uh, this with the verb descending, and it's a function. So we just sort of wrap mass.g dot in the descending function and run a range again. And now we've got our whales floating to the top and all 10 of the largest mammals are whales. We can also sort by um, multiple columns. So if we go back and look at, um, let's say we want to look at the um, descending by mass, but we also want to know which families those are. So we want to find have them descending within each family so that we can have a look at what's going on there. So what we would do is we would say family and then descending by mass. So if I run that, oops, well, the first thing we see is that we've got some other problematic things. There's four rows at the bottom of that data that are just empty. Um, I'm going to ignore that for now. Um, but so we've now ordered them by family. And then within each family, we've got them descending order by body mass. So if there's only one member of that family, then they, then they um, appear there. But if they are, uh, if there's more than one like these three, then they go in descending order by mass. Now, one of the problems here is that families are nested inside orders. And so it's possible that these are going to end up, um, you know, different families are going to be next to families from different orders. So we might even want to do order family and then descending by mass. Um, 
and now we're seeing, okay, we've got bovids and our largest bovids are, uh, what, 950 kilograms. And then they get smaller from there and they're all members of the Artiodactyla. All right. So, um, Lots of different ways that you can arrange your data. Um, interestingly, ordering your data by different variables is a good way to catch problems. Okay, so if you want, you like this one, um, or uh, outlying variables, we wanted to see if there, like we sorted them by mass, and suddenly there were some negative mass values, well, we'd know those were errors. Um, so sorting is a good data um, quality control strategy just for future reference. Finally, what we might, the final verb we're going to talk about in this video is filter. And so what filter does is allow us to identify rows of our data set that meet certain criteria. So select allowed us to pick columns of the data set by name. Filter is going to allow us to pick out rows of the data uh, according to some conditions. So for example, if we just wanted to know about the bovids, because we've figured out, oh, there, you know, there's quite a, seems to be quite a few of them, and they seem quite large. So we would do filter MLH, and we would do family. And these are logical conditions, so we're going to use logical operators equals equals in this case. Um, Bovidae. There we go. So this actually gives us some interesting information, right? Now we know there's 103 members of the family Bovidae in this data set. And um, so that's useful. Um, and if we wanted to do, we wanted to see all of the ones that are not bovids, we could change this logical operator to not equals, so the exclamation point is logical not. So you read that as not equals. And that's going to give us then the 1,341 rows, all of the things that are not bovids. Now one possible error you might make here is, um, and I make this error all the time, is to forget to type two equal signs. And what that does is assign Bovidae to the argument family. <laughs> and let's see, filter is actually pretty smart about this. Um, it says, uh, this is not a logical thing. Um, it's named, and that usually means you've used equals instead of equals equals. Did you mean this? Okay, so you can, it actually is uh, pretty smart about detecting that error, which is, which for which I'm forever grateful. Okay. What else can we do with this? Um, there's a whole bunch of logical operators, and as you get into more computing, um, you can build up more and more complicated conditions involving multiple variables. Um, uh, what we can do is, if we look at question mark logic, uh, here are the base logical operators. So here's the help for all of these different logical operators if you want to figure out, find out what, what they are. But for example, a com one common one to use would be we want to combine two conditions. So in computer speak, that's an AND condition. We want this to be true and we want this second thing to be true. So for example, if we wanted to know uh, to withdraw back the bovids uh, who are less than 100 kilograms, then we would combine those two conditions with an ampersand, which is the logical and, and we would then say mass.g is less than 100,000, because those are in grams. So that gives us all of the 69 bovids in the data set that are less than 100 kilograms in weight. Um, another common type of condition, well, let me back up a step. 
there's another way to do this in filter, an AND condition, and that is to simply provide two distinct uh, logical conditions. So if I now I've got two conditions, family equals equals Bovidae, comma, mass less than 100,000. Filter will combine these conditions with AND for you. Um, so I don't know why I keep looking at my little video in the corner there. That's the worst possible thing to be doing. Um, so that's another way to get an AND logical condition. What if we wanted to say, I want both the bovids or I want the um, cervids, the deer. So we would do that with a logical or. So or is going to be true if either of its conditions is true. So we would do family equals equals bovidae or family equals equals Survey and there we go. So now we've got we're up to 133 mammals that are either bovids or cervids. Um, and so that's about as far as we want to go right at the moment, just with discussing different kinds of things. We could then do um, another condition, we could ask for the bovids and cervids that are less than 100,000 um, kilograms, or 100,000 grams, 100 kilograms, um, and that's a smaller group, so 91 individuals. All right, I think that's enough for this video. In the next video, we'll talk about uh, filtering out missing values, which is kind of a unique